You know her as Kelly from the hit show Big Time Rush. We're glad to be chatting with Tanya Chisholm. How's it going? Good. How are you? Very good. Glad to be chatting with you. Yes, great to be chatting with you as well. And you have to tell us, how does it feel being part of uh, one of the most popular shows around right now? It, it feels surreal. It's honestly, like such a big blessing. It's so much fun, and it's just great to be a part of a successful show, but also a show where your cast is like amazing. Everyone's super nice, super funny, and it's just like a very like family atmosphere. So it's great to be able to go to work and just have fun and be with people who you really like. It's uh -huh. great. Well, did you expect the show to become as big as it is today? You know, I didn't. I didn't really go into it with very many expectations. Like when I was booked for the show, I was only booked as a recurring character. So I wasn't even sure how many times I'd be on it. I could have been on it like twice, you know. Um, and so for the first season, they just kept on bringing me back and bringing me back. And then the second season, they made me a series regular. And um, yeah, so it was like such a surprise and so exhilarating that the show had done so well, just because I had no idea that I would be a permanent part of it, you know. Right, absolutely, and the show wouldn't be the same without Kelly. Oh, thank you. I don't think so either. Someone needs to keep those boys in check. Exactly, <laughs> and the whole show and the whole cast, everybody seems to get along so well. Yeah, totally. Everyone is, like, such great friends. Like, we all go to each other's parties and, you know, go to each other's shows that we're doing outside of the show, and it's just really nice to be part of a supportive cast. Oh, absolutely. So I think that's pretty rare. Definitely. And then you got to tell us, what was your initial audition process like for landing the role of Kelly? Oh, okay. Well, initially, so I went in for the audition. It was, like, pretty simple. It was, like, two uh, uh, pages of size, and like, they liked me, and they called me back, and I went in for the producers, and I did well, and I was like, okay, cool. So that usually for a recurring character, it's not that many auditions, like, two auditions. And so a week later, they called me back in, and I was like, really? Like, just give me this part already. <laughs> um, so they called me back in, and I did, and I did a, a, my audition in front of the producers and the writers and the network, um, and that's when I realized, like, oh, this character must be, you know, they must be wanting to use her more than what I think. Um, so the, the last audition was pretty nerve-wracking because there's everybody in the room. Luckily, um, I had a friend of mine who was also up for that part, so we were kind of joking around and, like, laughing right before we went in. So I kind of, you know, got my nerves out and got me into that, that fun mode, which you need to be in for Nickelodeon shows. So it was cool. When I went in, I just I did it, and it was just funny when I get nervous, they, like, I start to dance. Like, so I was in there, and they're asking me questions, and I was, like, doing Ronda Jobs and, <laughs> and Pafes. And they're like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm nervous. I didn't even realize I was doing it. Did you notice on Twitter there's always a big-time rush trending, something's going on? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. That's another thing Big Time Rush has given me, uh, uh, awareness of Twitter. <laughs> Before, yes. I had, like, no idea what Twitter was, and the boys all taught me, like, how to do it. I was like, what's a tweet? <laughs> uh -huh. You have to tell us, how do you like um, playing Kelly? What's your favorite part about playing that character? I really like her. I mean, she's pretty much the straight character in the show, which um, is not always the most fun, so... You know, most of the time the boys get all of the, like, the pranks to do, and, you know, Gustavo gets to do a lot of the funny things. But I think it's challenging because um, you have to take what is written as, you know, the person who's kind of in charge and business-like, and you have to, it's your job to kind of figure out how to make that entertaining and how to make her fit into the cast so that she's doing her job as her character, but that she's also entertaining and makes you laugh. So, um, so that was, I, th I think it was... Uh, a really good acting exercise for me um, to figure out how to do that. And then as I did that, the writers realized, like, oh, Tanya, she's funny. Like, let's write more funny things for her. Let's put her in a shopping cart slingshot, you know? <laughs> so I think that was the, that's my favorite thing about her. Also, my other favorite thing about her is that she's pretty much the only girl. So it's fun to be a, the only girl in a room full, full of cute boys. <laughs> Right. Not a bad work day. Not a bad job at all. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I hear filming can go on for hours on. What's a day like for you on the set from, like, beginning to end? What goes on? Oh, yeah. Filming can be really long, especially when you're doing, you know, we do so many pranks and, like, complicated. Like, we did a scene where me and Carlo um, had to battle uh, a, <laughs> a raging coffee machine. So, like, they filled an entire room up with foam, and we had to go into the foam and, like, 
play baseball bats around, which is, in retrospect, really dangerous. Like, we could hit each other. Um, so when you have to do stuff like that, that and, like, reset and do it again and then reset and do it from the reverse, it can take a long time. Um, I think our longest uh, episode shooting was the Halloween episode. Mm-hmm. It was an hour long, and everyone had to get his costume. It took us, like, two weeks. And, like, the last day we filmed from, like, 7 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock in the morning. Wow. It was like a full, a full day. But wow. I mean, you can never really complain when your work day is playing around and having fun. So, it's not bad. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun, like you said, and then who gets to do that normally? You don't get to do that, so. I know. It's really awesome. It's such a, it's like such a cool thing to be on a kid's show because you get the wackiest antics. Right. And uh, how do you like working with the guys at Big Time Rush? you got to tell us something that the fans would find pretty surprising about them. Oh, surprising. Um, well, first of all, I love working with them. They're all very, like, lovely people, super sweet, really funny, and, like, just very talented. Um, all of them actually sing and play their own music, which I'm sure the fans who have been to our concerts know. Um, something surprising about them. Let's see. Um, James uh, plays the piano really well. Mm-hmm. I know I didn't know that about him, but he's, like, like classically trained, really great. Um Let's see, Carlos, what do we not know about Carlos? He, oh, I don't know if this is inappropriate. He had a, a puppy that got eaten by a wolf. Isn't oh. <laughs> that surprising? Oh, very surprising. Really, really sad. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, Logan? Hmm. I don't know. What's surprising about Logan? About Logan? Is, like is he like his character, would you say? Is he like his character? Yeah. Um, no. Logan is so much cooler than his character. He's, uh-huh. like, such a dope kid. Okay, okay. Like, he's definitely a kid that you want to go to, like, your prom with. Like, he's really sweet, really fun. Like, he'll make you laugh. I really th- great. I think I've heard a few times he's a flirt. Is that true? Oh, he's definitely for all of the boys are such flirts. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But I think that Logan, definitely Logan and Kendall are the biggest flirts, for yeah. sure. Interesting, interesting. Those are all cool facts about them. <laughs> And then you have to tell us, if you were to come up with an episode of Big Time Rush of your own, what would you like to see happen with Kelly? Oh, happen to Kelly? Well I, well, I think it would be funny if we did an episode of, like, where Gustav and I, and I somehow turn into babies. Ah. <laughs> and, like, the boys are in charge. I think that would be a really funny comedy duo for me and Clickman to do. <laughs> wow, that would be a pretty neat episode. I've never thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> Have you considered it to, like, have you mentioned it to the writers and just joked around about that? Um, I think we told it to Scott once, but they're pretty, um, they know where the show's going, and, I mean, they, they definitely take our suggestions, but I think that they kind of have it planned out okay, okay. <laughs> what they want to happen. Well, I actually hear you're classically trained in ballet, so I think that would be kind of neat to have, like, a big-time rush ballet episode, if you could do something like yeah, that. Yeah, totally. Oh, and that's the other thing. I think it would be really, really cool and interesting to do, like, a big-time musical. Mm-hmm. Because everyone on the set, you know, like, Carlos is, like, comes from a musical theater background, so does Stephen Glickman. Stephen plays uh, the piano super well, great singer. I also sing. I um, studied musical theater in college. And, yeah, like you said, I've been constantly trained in ballet for 18 years. So I think it'd be fun to do, like, a musical one where we do, you know, like everyone breaks out into song and dance. Right. So everyone gets to use their talent. <laughs> that would be so neat. Yeah. And uh, do you have a favorite episode of Big Time Rush that you filmed so far? Well, I have so many favorite parts. Um, I really like Big Time Reality. I think that was really funny. And then recently, Big Time Superheroes came out, and I think that one is was really, really well done, like with the animation and everything. And it was just really cool. And I heard like people on Twitter were like, "Oh, we're going, we're going um, as Halloween as Bullhead." And that was like my uh-huh. quote unquote superhero costume. So it was me. It was really cool. I like those too. That is neat. We talked with uh, Stephen Glickman as well, and he couldn't stop raving about that episode. Yeah, it was fun. Well, if you've seen it, you've seen the costume. We have friends around, tear them out. Right. And then it's just hilarious. You can only imagine. And then you've worked with a couple of famous guest stars like Fabio and Lorenzo Lamas. How did you like working with them? Um, really great. I think my favorite, Lorenzo Lamas is super funny, and Fabio is obviously hilarious. Uh-huh. And it's funny because Stephen Glickman and Fabio are, like, close friends. Uh-huh. And it's just, like, the most 
like oddball couple. <laughs> um, my favorite was Steve Dog, though. He was really oh, cool yeah. to work with because I didn't know what really to expect. Um, but he came on set and he like nailed it. Like he knew all of his lines it was like great. And I was not expecting that at all. And he was really cool. Like before we started filming, he like came up to all of us and was like, "Can I take a picture with you for my daughter?" Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, yes! <laughs> Can I take a picture of you for my friend?" <laughs> That's pretty like awesome. Yeah, I didn't expect you to say that from Snoop Dogg, but that's so neat to hear. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool. He was in our Christmas episode. Uh-huh. And who would you like to see guest star on the show? Um, ooh, you know, I would really love uh, <laughs> David Cross, mm-hmm. who played Tobias Bunke in Arrested Development, to be on the show. I think he'd be awesome. Yeah, that would be love, easy. love, love, love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very nice. And uh, I think we were joking around about uh, with Shao and Kate that Kendall's dad is coming into the picture, possibly. And uh, Oh, yeah. I heard a rumor about that. I heard a rumor about that. I don't know anything about it, but that would be cool. Yeah, that would be so neat. We were kidding around about maybe Fabio being the father. That would be interesting. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to wait and see what, who it's going to be. We'll have to wait exactly. Yes. And um, one of Big Time Rush's songs are called If I Ruled the World. We're going to ask you, if you ruled the world, what would you do? If I ruled the world, this is going to sound really stupid. I'm not stupid. It's going to sound very trite. Um, but if I ruled the world, I would make sure that everyone has to lose. I feel like we have such a misappropriation of wealth. And not that, you know, some people shouldn't be wealthy and some people should be, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. whatever. If you make a lot of money, that's fine. But there's enough on the planet to go around. I feel like there's no reason why babies should be starving in places, you exactly. know. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, everybody... So I think that would be the thing that I would do. I would appropriate the, the wealth more fairly. Right. That is a good answer. It definitely is, and it makes sense, too. <laughs> I like it. And uh, let's actually talk some of your films that you were in. You were in High School Musical 2 and Legally Blonde. Yeah. Tell us your experience yeah. about working on those. Um, it was really fun. Uh, for High School Musical 2, um, we actually went to St. George, Utah, so that was my first experience going away from L.A. to shoot. I know it's fun because one, my, my, one of my best friends came to visit me, and she stayed with me, and that was cool. And um, it was, uh, like, very resortish. so, you know, we'd work, like, three days, and then we'd have four days to so play around, so that was cool. Um, and then Legally Blonde actually, um, Savage Holland di- directed that movie, and he's uh, the director of, like, a bunch of our episodes, so it was nice to get to work with him again. Um, and I made a lot of friends on that movie, actually. Mm-hmm. So those were both very fun. Yeah, those are both cool movies. We liked, we enjoyed both of those. We liked those. Well, thank you. Uh-huh. And you got to tell us, how did you like working on films as opposed to uh, sitcom? Well, you know, I like both of them. I like the um, normality that working on a, a sitcom gives you. Like, you know that every day you're going to go to work from probably this time to this time, and you kind of get your schedule ahead of time. Um, and you kind of have a sense of, like, what your year is going to look like. Whereas a movie is great because you have, like, a whole story that you know, you know, and you get to, like, plan out what your character is going to do. Um, but then it's over, you know, in a month or two months, and it's kind of on to the next. So there are good things about both of them. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. And then what TV shows and movies do you find yourself watching? Oh, gosh. Well, my favorite show is Arrested Development, as I said before, which I'm so excited they added 10 more episodes because it was crazy that they took it off the air. It's so funny. Um, so I, I actually find myself watching the DVDs to those a lot. I also really love 30 Rock. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hate to say it, but <laughs> my guilty pleasure is pretty much any and all reality TV show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Us too. Us too. How can you not? We love it. I love it. What are, what are your, some of your favorites? Oh, jeez. Well, I love all of the bride shows and, like, all of the um, redecorating shows on TV. Oh. And then as far as, as, far as the less classy ones, I mean, Jersey Shore is always fun to watch. My new recent favorite is Mob Wives. Uh-huh. <laughs> Interesting. I know any new reality show they come out with, it's like, we got to watch it. Here's a new one. I know. I, even if you don't particularly like it, there's something about it that you're just like, oh, I can watch this. <laughs> right, right.